We join the Dutch police on the trail of drug mafia gangs. I think we're on to something. Producing synthetic drugs not only requires a lot of chemicals, it also produces tons of highly toxic waste, which usually ends up in the environment. There are homes and children here. Driven by greed, the cartels often pressure residents into cooperating. A farmer received a threatening letter in the letterbox. It read, we know where your children go to school. How dangerous is this toxic waste for humans and the environment? Across the border in western Germany, there are problems too. This is a sleepy village north of Bielefeld. In April 2019, a startling discovery was made. We just couldn't imagine that such a large drug lab could be set up on our doorstep in this village without anyone noticing. Ralph Lorry heads up the local volunteer fire department. One Sunday morning, during breakfast, he saw something shocking. Looking out of the window, there was a fire raging not far from his home, right next to his workshop. Lori drove straight over. Just as he arrived, two strangers were leaving the burning building, which belonged to a local businessman. At that moment, two men came out of the building, and one of them had a gas mask on. They fled the scene in a van. Other firefighters from Ralph Flory's department then arrived. They entered the building to investigate. At first, they didn't know what to make of it. There were countless propane gas cylinders, all stacked in the entrance area. It was almost impossible to get through. The explosive cylinders were not only dangerous, but also highly unusual. Why would anyone need so much gas? The sheer amount of it was suspicious. Further inside, they found 1,000-liter canisters filled with chemicals, likely both toxic and explosive. The whole thing was a bit overwhelming. Over the next few hours, it became clear that Lori and his team were not dealing with a normal fire. They had stumbled upon the largest drug laboratory ever found in Germany. The Netherlands. It's December 2022. We're in the province of Limburg. We're out with an undercover investigator from the Dutch police. To protect his identity, we're hiding his face and have distorted his voice. We'll call him Jan Boykels. It's always good and a bit exciting to be out at night. We have information that there might be a drug lab somewhere here in Bielingen, a village near here. We don't know if there are people there now. The special task force will go in first to check it out and make sure the area is safe. If there are people inside, they'll be arrested, and if there are weapons, they'll be confiscated. Who should I follow? Follow you. Who? The guy with the Toyota. The most common synthetic drugs are ecstasy, which is consumed in pill form, speed, which can be snorted, and crystal meth, the crystal form of methamphetamine, which can be smoked or also snorted. Jan Boykels and his team, meanwhile, are getting ready to storm the drug lab. They discovered it while investigating undercover. The police approach in convoy. The heavily armed special forces unit is in the black van. They also have a bulldozer, ready to tear open the gates so the special task force can enter quickly and surprise anyone who may be inside. The door's open, they're going in. 
Wearing gas masks to protect themselves from the chemicals used in drug production, the police storm the building. At the first door, the officers find nothing. You could try all the doors. It's building 52D, or 2D, I mean. Should we open it? Yes, if you think there's someone there. The police break open a second door, and then a third. Inside the warehouse, there are barrels of chemicals or something, so the LFO will now come and check them. But I think it'll be a good haul. The LFO is a department of the Dutch police force that specializes in chemicals used in drugs. When something suspicious is found, they go in after the special forces unit to check whether there are hazardous substances and secure the scene. They've done an inspection to see what's in the lab and if there are any toxic chemicals. Once we get the okay from them, we can go in. We're going. Come with me. Now the other police officers can enter the building. We're going in too. Our colleagues from the LFO say no drugs have been produced here yet. This is a laboratory under construction. This is where the stuff is. This is Rob. Rob de Frey is heading up the LFO operation. He's been taking a closer look at the chemicals. This is a drug laboratory under construction. We see here a very large boiler tank with a capacity of around 1,000 liters. Then there are all sorts of suction devices. This still has to be assembled. If you look at the size of that tank, you could boil several hundred liters of chemicals in there at once. Now let's look at the chemicals over here. They're in this tent. These barrels contain formamide, formic acid, and phosphoric acid. It's an amphetamine laboratory, almost ready to begin production. The chemicals would be mixed and heated in large metal containers using gas burners. And there are tons of chemicals, toxic acids that would have produced around 1,000 kilos of amphetamines, with a street value of 1 million euros in just one week. Jan Beukels and his colleague Joost Trollenberg, who's a special investigator for drug laboratories, have seen many such crime scenes. What's a bit unusual about this place is that here are the chemicals, here is the laboratory, and next to it is a room where people who work here can sleep or have a cup of coffee. The thing is, once the process is running, you can't interrupt it. You have to stick with it. And if something goes wrong, you have to be able to intervene. And that's where things get especially problematic, because the people who make these drugs don't usually know what to do if it goes wrong. And so sometimes there are accidents and people get seriously hurt, because things explode and so on. We've seen it all. The Netherlands is Europe's biggest center for producing synthetic drugs. By chance, the police also stumble on a cannabis plantation nearby during their operation. But here, the investigators are more concerned about the synthetic drugs, as they involve toxic chemicals. Very few of the drug makers are chemists and aware of the dangers. Fires and explosions occur time and again. Local residents are also at risk, even though most of them have no idea what's happening in their neighborhood. In this process, come for the Various chemical vapors are released during the process. Carbon monoxide can be released, which is dangerous. 
The concentration might even be high enough to kill someone. That's why the special unit that went in first were wearing protective suits. They include masks that filter out these substances so they can work safely. It's still pretty clean here because the lab was still under construction. It's usually the case that once they start producing, the place gets pretty dirty. They don't know exactly what they're doing, so there may be chemicals everywhere. You have to be careful where you step, otherwise your shoes might melt away and burn. It's quite dangerous. Large quantities of toxic waste are produced during the manufacture of the drugs. The Dutch police told us the first 1,000 kilos of amphetamines in this laboratory would have produced up to 30,000 kilos of toxic waste. So what happens to that waste? Back in Germany, in the city of Dusseldorf, we find answers from the state criminal police force. Forensic scientist Johannes Zagermann led the chemical analyses at the huge drug laboratory found near Bielefeld in 2019. It too was a laboratory for producing amphetamines, including speed. Thanks to 3D imaging, he can now tour the crime scene from his computer. This is the view from the warehouse to the outside. You can then turn around and have a view into the building. You can see a lot of canisters stored here, or these IBCs with a capacity of 1,000 liters. Some contain waste chemicals. Further back are the ones with pure chemicals used to synthesize the drugs. There were two rooms set up for the synthesizing of amphetamines. A break room for the drug makers. An elaborate ventilation system to filter out the toxic vapors and transport them outside. Equipment for producing 1,000 liters of amphetamine oil per week, well shielded from the outside world. Plus, 30,000 liter canisters for storing chemicals and toxic waste. And here, the investigators made a shocking discovery. One of the canisters at the back is crucial. Let's zoom in closer. At the moment the photo was taken, there was still a bag on top of the outlet. But we later discovered a deep well that had been drilled here, where the waste was being emptied into the ground. The hole went down 12 meters below the surface. The investigators were alarmed. The chemical waste would not only contaminate the soil and kill plants, animals and microorganisms, any person who came into contact with the caustic chemicals could also burn their skin and, if they drank the contaminated groundwater, could even damage their internal organs. The police investigation showed the laboratory had only been in operation for a few weeks. It was set up by a Dutch gang. A short circuit probably triggered the fire in the plant. Luckily, the laboratory had only been able to produce a small amount of drugs and therefore hadn't discharged much waste. An environmental report found no acute risk to local residents. It's no longer possible to determine how much has seeped into the ground. But we believed it was only a few hundred liters, at least from the tank that was connected at the time. Back in the Netherlands, investigator Jan Boykels is visiting the public prosecutor's office in Maastricht. He's investigating a case of chemicals trafficking and wants to discuss the next steps with public prosecutor Rob Smeets. Appointments like this are not uncommon for Jan Boykes. Drug production is booming in the Netherlands. Ecstasy and speed produced here can make it all the way to Australia. 80% of Dutch-made drugs are exported. One European study found that the cartels sell 19 billion euros worth every year. A destructive business all around. The resulting chemical waste pollutes the forests or runs into rivers. It's not good for wildlife, but it's not good for people either. When children play in the area, they come into contact with the chemicals. It's dangerous. 
Jan Boegels is taking a criminal investigator from Amsterdam to see an illegal drug dump site. Shana Mehlbaum is investigating the phenomenon of drug waste throughout the country. She's hoping that Jan Boegels can give her information on what's happening in the province of Limburg. It's an area of particular interest because it lies close to the border with Germany and Belgium. Things here in the Limburg area that are that is very close to the borders is very different, for instance, than in the northern region of the Netherlands or the eastern region of the, of the, or the Netherlands. The big question is, are the drug producers transporting their waste and disposing of it far away from the laboratories to minimize the risk of detection? Or are they disposing of it close by, which is cheaper and easier? If you want to know how far the drug, the waste is traffic, you have to know where it comes from. Uh, and often we don't, we don't know it. Um, there, there, are, there are too many dumpings to analyze the content. But there's also a theory that there might be like professional dumpers who collect the waste from several production locations uh, and then dump it at one spot. Jan Boegels shows Shanna Meerbaum a dumping site right on the German-Dutch border, an idyllic rural location. During the day, the area is popular with walkers and cyclists, but at night, it's quiet. The field is surrounded by woods, a perfect place to dispose of waste. If you look at this, so the good thing is at least that it's in containers, so the waste is contained, but you can see that it's kind of messy spreading around, so there is a risk of that it's going to leak, and then it would be dangerous if you get in contact with the substances itself, uh, but it can be worse. There are cases where the, uh, where the waste is directly dumped in, into the land or into the water, uh, and that can have severe results uh, for plants, but also for animals or the, yeah, the first responders. The Dutch authorities find around 200 such dump sites every year. Sometimes the drug producers simply dump the waste into the sewage system. But if the chemicals reach a certain concentration, they disrupt the function of the sewage treatment plants. So with this option, there's a high risk of detection. Throughout her investigation, Shanna Mailbaum has found that the cartels dispose of 70% of their toxic waste in sparsely populated nature reserves. They often steal cars or trucks, load them full of waste, and then abandon them or set them on fire. Or they bribe farmers to let them mix the smelly waste into their liquid manure. The chemicals are then spread out onto the fields. Dutch police find 250,000 kilos of drug waste every year. But according to estimates, that's only a third of the actual amount of waste produced. Probably the criminal networks are getting better in hiding the drug waste and disposing it in ways that we don't uh, easily detect. At Germany's criminal police office in Wiesbaden, concern is also growing about the dangers of drug waste. The large lab discovered near Bielefeld shows the Dutch drug mafia is also active in Germany, and the waste doesn't stop at the border either. In 2018, there was a case where a truck was simply driven across the border. A police officer noticed a brown liquid leaking out of it. It contained 10 tons of production waste. Michael Pütz is another forensic scientist and a chemist. Before he explains what actually makes the waste so toxic, he shows us the drugs that the police have confiscated. This is a bag of ecstasy tablets. The bags inside it contain around 100,000 tablets. This is one of two bags that were seized in one haul, so 200,000 tablets in total. An ecstasy tablet typically sells for around 5 euros, so these two bags alone have a street value of around 1 million euros. 1 million euros for two bags. That's an indication of just how much money can be made from these drugs. It explains why the producers are willing to handle toxic chemicals without fully understanding what they're doing. Michael Pütz then does a little experiment to demonstrate just how dangerous the chemicals are. In every amphetamine laboratory, you'll find at least two of these four acids, often in very large quantities. 
concentrated phosphoric acid, concentrated formic acid, concentrated sulfuric acid, and concentrated hydrochloric acid. Each one poses specific dangers. Formic acid, for example, releases carbon monoxide if it's heated too much. That's why fatal accidents occur at amphetamine laboratories, due to carbon monoxide poisoning. Now let's look at the effect of concentrated sulfuric acid on organic materials. The organic material he's going to use is simple household sugar. It consists of nothing other than carbohydrates, a basic building block of life found in the cells of our bodies. So what happens? The acid breaks down, or rather burns the sugar, within just a short time. This would have the same effect on living systems, so I could equally burn the surface of my skin. In addition to corrosive acids, the waste contains other substances which are likely dangerous too. The bad news is that all these organic substances that are byproducts of amphetamine synthesis have not actually been pharmacologically studied. So it's not exactly possible to say what toxic effects they'll likely have. Experts suspect that the drug waste contains carcinogenic substances, but whether they could pose a risk to humans and nature has not yet been properly researched. In 2018, a study from the Netherlands found residues of the chemical waste in corn, and therefore in the food chain. But was that an isolated case, or evidence of something more widespread? Nobody knows, as there's no regular screening for these chemicals. The cartels appear to have been busy expanding their activities in rural areas. Jan Beugels meets with a spokesperson for the Limburg farming community. The undercover investigator wants to know what experience the farmers have had with the Mafia. It becomes clear that the gangs are specifically targeting storehouses and barns to produce drugs and hide waste. Let me give you an example. A farmer received a threatening letter in the letterbox. It read, we know where your children go to school. In other words, farmers are being blackmailed and intimidated into continuing to do this, or into making their premises available, even though they no longer want to. Farmer Thijs Rompelberg has himself been lucky so far. Unlike other farmers and friends of his, he has not yet been approached by the drug producers. He's all too aware that standing up to the brutal and financially powerful cartels is not easy. So how can the problem of the drug labs be brought under control? One possibility would be to target the root of the problem by taking chemicals used in drug production out of circulation before they can get into the wrong hands. The substances are mostly brought to Europe by sea from China, arriving here at the port of Hamburg, for example. Customs investigators have received a tip-off. They're following a truck that may be transporting drug chemicals. We've picked up a container here at the container terminal, which we will now take to the Waltershof area to be x-rayed. The truck is put into a huge x-ray machine, where its contents can be scanned. But the image on the computer doesn't appear to show anything suspicious. Stefan, I'm finished. Can you come over? So I've studied the x-ray. Let's look at it together. I haven't found any irregularities. And the container itself is also negative? The container itself is negative. No sign of manipulation. Let me show you again here. But the x-ray images only provide a limited view. So the investigators decide to break open the container. Mm -hmm. 
My impression is that the goods are ultimately no different from what we've already seen on the X-ray image. We can also see now during the manual inspection that the goods are packed in different ways and that we have a few more packages on top, which was also clearly visible on the X-ray. There's nothing here that gives rise to suspicion that would justify a more in-depth inspection. From our point of view, we can now say the goods are okay. Since the 1990s, Germany and the Netherlands have had a list of chemicals that are considered precursors for drug production. These substances are subject to customs controls. But the drug producers regularly change their formulas. Plus, many companies also use these chemicals for completely legal purposes. So the work of the customs officers is like searching for a needle in a haystack. And they can only give a fraction of the containers a thorough check. Back in the Netherlands, the authorities are now trying to enlist the help of the general public. Their hope is that this could allow new laboratories to be discovered more quickly. Here, a former police officer is explaining to local people how a drug laboratory works and what it smells like. PMK is a precursor of MDMA, which is the active ingredient in in ecstasy. in ecstasy, right. When I ask young people that, they know the answer too. PMK smells a little bit like anise. The hope is that vigilant residents who notice a suspicious smell in the neighborhood will report it to the police, who can then disrupt the operations of the drug cartels and thereby stop them spreading. We're on the road again with Jan Boykes. He wants to show us another crime scene. These are the two garages where we were a few months ago. This is where the laboratory was. The laboratory was in number four and the chemicals were in number five. It's very dangerous when they're right next to each other like that. The drug producers simply dumped their toxic waste into the adjacent stream, which then became contaminated. It had to be cleaned up at great expense. This is where it was. The hose came around the corner and led down into the water. People live all around here. Children play here. There are animals, house pets that might drink from the water. Yes, it's very worrying. Every year, the Dutch government spends six million euros on cleanup operations like this one. The wider risks are rarely examined closely. And in Germany, the problem gets even less attention. The authorities don't keep a central record of how many illegal drug waste dumps are identified per region each year. <laughs> 